And Hashem Himself is telling us, He only wants Ish Asher Yidvenu Libo, a man whose heart motivates him. He should want to give it. Why should he want to give it? Why should he want to give it? Well, perhaps if he reads the following verse later on, where he sees in verse number eight, they shall make a sanctuary for me so that I may dwell among them. Now, although the third Bet Mikdash has not been rebuilt, we're still waiting for the Mashiach to come. Had he come, like some religions say, or some people say, the Bet Mikdash would have been built. So, one of the clear signs that the Mashiach has arrived is if the Bet Mikdash is built. If it hasn't been built, that means the Mashiach hasn't arrived. Because that is one of his first obligations. Now, Hashem says, although that Bet HaMikdash was not built, the Jewish people are obligated to read this Torah portion and apply it to their life every single year. To apply the verse that says, you shall make a sanctuary for me, so that I may dwell among them. How can I make a sanctuary? When a person takes money that they worked for, takes money that they have, and takes a portion of it that's significant, not money that he could simply like, doesn't care even if he loses it. You know, like somebody has change and he forgets to take the change out of his pocket and he throws the the pants in the laundry and then when he realizes that he still had the money in the pocket he doesn't really lose any sleep over it because it's so insignificant not that kind of money when a person puts a significant amount of his money and invests it into publicizing more to in the world helping other people do tshuva and get closer to hashem making sure that talmidei chachamim have everything they need in order to study Torah at full force. And he contributes, she contributes to the best of their ability, but no less than at least 10% of what they make each month, as well as any other opportunity to give charity that's above it. If they really want to test their emunah, they would give 20%, but no more. Shem doesn't ask you to give 100%. But why should one even work a full-time job, invest X amount of time learning for this job, building his career, doing everything possible, blood, sweat, and tears to finally make a living, and then after working all that time, getting that paycheck, and without even thinking twice, take 10% of that money invest it into an organization like Bezat Hashem, invest it into Kiruv, invest it into Torah scholars without thinking twice, without saying, you know what, maybe I'll do this next month, maybe I'll save up and make it a bigger amount. No, no, simply, until I don't give that 10%, it's not my money. Just like at the time of the Bet Mikdash, until the farmers didn't give that 10%, until they didn't give the portion to the Levi, until they didn't give the portion to the Kohen, until they didn't give that portion, they weren't allowed to use all of that crop, all of that food. Why? It's not mine until I give. And therefore, the Chachamim explained to us through these words that when a person takes their hard work and invest that money on a regular basis into Torah, but the real Torah, not some false version of Torah and sugar-coated version of Torah or some idolatrous version of Torah, but real version of Torah that empowers people, real versions of Torah 
that is honest to what it says, that person that's donating the money is really taking from what Hashem gave them and investing it into themselves. Because that's the only money that they will be able to take with them when they leave this world. Because regardless of whether a person has a net worth of a Elon Musk of hundreds of billions of dollars or a Bezos or Warren Buffett or all types of other billionaires out there or a person has what Resh Lakish had. One of the sages had, he had literally a couple of vegetables left before he died. Regardless of what, of what net worth they have while they're alive, once a person dies, none of that money can go to them. The only money that is valuable to them is the money that they invested into the Torah. Money they invested into doing acts of kindness that are permissible according to the Torah. Because if you're kind to wicked people, if you're kind to murderers, rapists, and anti-Torah people, that's not kindness. So not all kindness is the same. But needless to say, when a person invests that money into Torah, that means that that money becomes part of their eternity. That money is really a blessing that Hashem gave you that you are now taking and investing it into yourself. Yeah, but I'm investing it into the Torah. No, what you're doing is that you're taking what Hashem gave you and you're building a sanctuary for Hashem in your heart. Because your donations are investments that build a Shema sanctuary in your heart. And perhaps if you think about it deep enough, you'll realize that if this is really the sanctuary that Hashem is talking about, that we're supposed to read every year, if I'm supposed to build a sanctuary for Hashem, even though it's not the third Bet Midash, He's saying, build a sanctuary for me. I can't build the Bet Midash. But the, the, the verse is still relevant. So how could it be relevant? You have to build a, uh, a sanctuary for Hashem to be among you. How can you build a sanctuary for Hashem to be among you? Now, if you build a church that publicizes some guy that died 2,000 years ago, how is that building Hashem a sanctuary? If you're building a mosque that publicizes some guy that says that an angel spoke to him in the middle of a desert and says to kill the chosen people, how is that publicizing Hashem? If you're building some zoo, and you're getting the elephant, a new cage. How is that building a Shema sanctuary? But if you're investing into the Torah, the Torah that is the instructions, the love letter from God, if you're investing into the world of Torah to help more people learn Torah, to help more people that are already learned Torah learn even better, learn even more, so without having the financial hardships that they do, then what you're doing is you're actually fulfilling this verse and building yourself not only an eternity where that money is actually valuable, but even more so. In this world, you're building a sanctuary for Hashem in your heart. Because what ends up happening is that now that you've made a commitment not as a one time, I'm excited, let me just donate a bunch of money, and then you don't hear from the guy for six years. No, you made a commitment, no matter how big or how small, to take 10% of your money and donate it as soon as you get it. You're not waiting for months, you're not waiting for days. As soon as you get it, it's like automatic. Why? Because I want to make sure that number one, God knows I want him. God knows I want him. I want him in my life. And I'm recognizing the fact that he really gives me 100%. The least I can do is take 10 of it and invest it into publicizing his name 